So one of the most important lessons in um, pre-calc is going to be this one. Now the reason it's so important is because um, as you go through the course, um, this stuff is going to show up again and again. And if you take any courses after this, like trigonometry or calculus, um, this is just a super important concept to have. Now let's talk about um, the transformations. So what the transformations mean is we're going to take a basic what I call a parent function, and we are going to manipulate it and change it into some of our other types of functions or possibly um, a modified version of the original. So the basic functions are, and I'm going to call them parent functions a lot. Um, the first one is our linear function, f of x equals mx plus b. Remember, m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. So in this particular graph, our y-intercept would be positive 1, since we're going up 1 and then over 3. Rise over run, our slope would be up one and to the right three, it would be one third. And so this equation would be y equals one third x plus one. Now that's just one sample of a linear function, but um, the one they have there is a good example. Our constant function is a horizontal line. It is technically a type of linear function where the slope is zero, um, but uh, they kind of give it its own little uh, name. This particular function, um, this is the B right here. And so in this particular case, this would just be F of X equals two, okay? Um, so it's F of X equals any number. Um, will give you a horizontal line, which we consider a constant function. When we were talking about functions that were increasing, decreasing, or constant, that's where this uh, is linked. Our identity function is also a type of linear function. Um, basically, it's f of x equals x. Um, you should basically know to graph it for most of these if you can plug in negative 1, 0, and 1 you get negative one, zero, and one, okay? So that's our identity function, which is a type of linear function. Then we have our absolute value function. It can also be written as a piecewise function, which is helpful if you take calculus in your future. Um, this would be x, or negative x, when x is less than zero and x when x is greater than or equal to zero. So sometimes you'll see the absolute value function written as two linear pieces. Um, so this is the positive uh, side, and of course this is the negative side. And if we plugged in negative one, zero, and positive one, you could see where those three points come. You want to be able to graph these parent functions, these basic functions, with a minimum of about three points accuracy. If you can graph them three points of accuracy, when you go to graph the others, it will be very helpful. Here is our quadratic function, f of x equals x squared. Uh, parabolic is sometimes the, the, uh, the term they use. Again, if we plug in that negative one, zero, and positive one, um, you will get one, zero, and one. Um, it will help you graph what you see there, but uh, remember you have to make that curve, you have to make it appear like a parabola. Then we have our cubic function here, which is f of x equals x cubed. If you plug in those three basic points, negative one, zero, and one, you get negative one, zero, and one. <clears throat> and you know, remember these, these things are going on and on in those directions. Okay. And we have our square root function. Now sometimes you'll see the square root f function written as x to the one half, 
when we go through some later um, lessons, we will explore writing uh, radicals as fractional exponents. We'll, we'll talk about that a little more. Um, some points that are nice for this one are your perfect squares. So I would plug in 0, 1, and 4 to get you started, which gives you 0, 1, and 2 when you take the square root. So that's these points right here. So there's our basic square root function. And then we have a cubed root function. Now unlike our square root, which you'll notice I only plugged positive numbers in, our cubed root, which can be written as x to the 1 3rd power, we do have this negative version. We can take the cubed root of negatives. So if we plug in negative 1, 0, and positive 1, we get a good, pretty decent, accurate representation. You want to kind of think about it as it looks very similar to your square root on this side, but then you get a, because it's an odd function, you get this mirror image on the left side. Okay, so there are um, eight of our basic parent functions. And let's talk about our last one. Uh, f of x equals 1 over x can have another alternative. You could write that as x to the negative 1. Now, technically, there is a vertical asymptote on along the y-axis and a vertical asymptote along the x-axis. That means basically that those points do not exist for the function. In the domain, you can't be zero. The range will not be zero either. So when we think about negative one, zero, and positive one for this one, negative one is negative one. That's that point right there. Positive one is positive one. That's the point right there. But this doesn't exist. This is actually an asymptote. When I transform or move a reciprocal function, I tend to uh, kind of move the asymptotes as a way to kind of keep track of what's happening. So these are the basic nine that we're gonna focus on um, in this lesson. We're gonna build upon them as we go through um, future lessons. So you wanna make sure you know these um, by heart. Let's look at our basic transformations. So if you have some function, they're gonna call the function f of x. And if we want to move it vertically, so I'm talking up and down. If we add on the outside, it's gonna go upward. So I, they have lots of words there, but I think add on the outside. It's gonna go up. And then if we subtract on the outside, it's going to go down. So subtract outside, it's going to go down, okay? Now, if we have a horizontal shift, so we're talking here left and right. Um, if I subtract on the inside, it's going to move to the right. So you see how it's inside the function. So it's by the x. If I could spell the word inside. So if I subtract on the inside, it's gonna go right. If I add on the inside, it's gonna go left. So it's very important that you know that transformation. Now let's take a look at um, our function here, uh, g and f. So both of these are related to our square root function. So the parent is uh, the square root of x. Now, um, this, they had made these charts prior to, uh, you know, they made them, I didn't make them. So for the square root, let's just look at the points at 0, 1, and 4. Okay, I don't care about those two. I mean, you can if you want to, but. So let's focus on our g function. So that's this one right here, okay? So you'll notice that on the outside of our function, there is a plus two. 
If you'll look where it said add on the outside, our function is going to move up to. Okay. So in this particular case, you still plug in to the square root of x. There's no change in that. So you do square root of x, and then you add 2 to that value. So our square root of 0 is 0 plus 2 is 2. The square root of 1 is 1 plus 2 is 3. The square root of 4 is 2 plus 2 is 4. So you'll notice that um, our y values increased by 2. So let's just make ourselves a little note that this is going to go up 2. So my parent function, let's draw on this one. And now let's, on the same one, let's draw our g of x function. So at 0, now I'm up 2. At 1, I'm up 3. At 4, I am up to 4. So do you see how the function was lifted up 2? Okay. Now let's look at this function. Now I'm going to make this into an xy chart. Okay, because I, I, I'm going to need to change the x values this time, and I want to show you how to do that. When something happens on the inside of the function, so our function was a square root, something is happening on the inside of that function. When that occurs, think about our three values I told you to plug in initially. I said the three values for the parent uh, square root function, the, the three x values were 0, 1, and 4. So just take whatever's on the inside, set x plus 2 equal to 0, x plus 2 equal to 1, and x plus 2 equal to 4. Now to solve each one of those, you must subtract 2. So let's solve each one of those. So this would be negative 2. That's going to be our first x value that we want to plug in. This would be negative 1. That's our next one. This would be positive 2. That's our last one. And now you just plug them in. Once you find the good x values to plug in, you just plug them in and, and do the algebra. And so <clears throat> negative 2 plus 2 is 0. The square root of that is 0. Negative 1 uh, plus 2 is 1. The square root of that is 1. And 2 plus 2 is 4. The square root of that is 2. Okay. So what's the transformation here? Well, on the inside, this better move left two units. So let's draw it. So here's our original. Let's move this to the left, too. So at negative 2, we're at 0. At negative 1, we're at 1. At 2, we're at 2. Look at everything. Move 2. Let's draw it. Move 2. Move 2. So as you can see, our function has moved two units to the left. Just slid over, okay? <clears throat> let's do the same thing. Now, let's look at our parent. Our parent is the um, quadratic. So I again, for this one, I'm not going to use the x values they originally did. I'm going to use, or let me kind of cover them up a little bit. So if you want to scribble them out on yours. I'm only going to do three of them. I'm going to plug in negative 1, 0, and 1. You don't really have to graph to five points accuracy unless you, you want to, unless you think that it's going to be more helpful in whatever you're doing. I don't know. So our normal parent function goes 1, 0, 1. I'm going to draw it on each of these. Here's our parent function. Sorry, I'm, I have the shakiest hands, and so I never can draw anything good on an iPad. <laughs> As I was saying. Okay. Now, first let's start with 
let's do, I'll do this one in red. Let's talk about h of x, which is x squared minus two. The minus two was on the outside of the square. If it's on the outside of the square, we should get an up or down movement. In this case, it should go down two. Nothing is changing the x values. So we should be able to just plug in the normal x values, negative one, zero, and one, okay? So let's make that the x values and that's the y values. So this is the x, this is the y. So um, if I plug in negative one, square, get one, one minus two is negative one. Plug in zero, get negative two. Plug in one, get negative one. So uh, let's plot those. So let's plot h of x right here. So at negative one, we are at negative one. At zero, we're at negative two. At one, we're at negative one. So do you see how our parabola just went down two units? Let's look at k of x. I'll make it green. I'm gonna, again, break this up at x and y's. This time we have something inside of the square. It is gonna move it left or right, okay? This is technically gonna to go to the right two units. But let's figure out why. If something happens inside the function, you're gonna take the original x values and set that thing next to it equal to the original three. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Well, every time we're gonna add two. And so this is gonna be an x value of one, two, and three. So if it's inside, it's going to change your x value. If it's outside, it's gonna change your y value. So let's go ahead now and uh, plug in one, two, and three. If we plug in one, we get negative one. When we square it, we get one. When we plug in two, we get zero. When we square it, we get zero. When we plug in three, we get one. When we square it, we get one. Let's graph that one. So at one, we're at one. At two, we're at zero. At three, we're at one. You see what happened? Our function shifted to the right two units. Let's look at this function. So now they haven't told you the parent. They have just said, graph it. Tell me what happened. So so let's make up a chart. There's something inside of the x. I know the parent is y equals x squared. So when something is inside the x, whatever the original x's you would use for the parent, you're gonna set those equal to those x's. So x plus one equals negative one, x plus one equals zero, x plus one equals positive one. You're gonna solve each one. So this gives me an x value of negative two, negative one, and zero. Now the y values are nice because just plug it in you'll get the y values. So if I plug in negative two, I get negative one. When I square it, I get one. One minus four is negative five. When I plug in negative one, I get zero. Square it gets zero. Minus four is minus four. And then when I plug in zero, I get one. Square it get one. I think I must have done something weird. Okay, let's go back to this one. I think this is wrong. Let me do it again. Negative two plus one is negative one. Square it get one minus four is negative three. And then when you plug in zero, you get negative three. Sorry about that. Okay, now let's plot it. And then let's discuss what we found. So at negative two, we're at negative three. At negative one, we're at negative four. And at zero, we're at negative three. So to describe what happened, Remember, horizontal shift is an up or down shift. This thing went down four. Okay, it's all because of this point. You can see very clearly it went one, two, three, four. Okay, 
Did it go left or right? Well, it went left one, okay? So that's that one. Let's take a look at number four. The parent is our absolute value. Normally, I would plug into my absolute value, negative one, zero, and one, and get one, zero, one. Okay? So that's just important to kind of know those other ones, the parent functions, the basic functions by heart. So, so we're going to take and we're going to set the inside equal to the three original x's that I would have used if it was just a plain old plain old square root of x. So we're going to set x minus 2 equal to negative 1, x minus 2 equal to 0, and x minus 2 equal to, to 1. We're going to solve each one. We're going to add 2 to that, add 2 to 0, add 2 to 1. So our function, the best x's to plug in are 1, 2, and 3. Well, now let's do it. Well, if we plug in 1, we get the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. If we plug in 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 plus 3 is uh, 3. And then if we plug in 3, 3 minus 2 is 1. The absolute value of that is 1 plus 3 is 4. You should see this repeat right here. That symmetry should occur. So let's draw it. At 1, we are at 4. At 2, we are at 3. At 3, we are at 4. There's your V. <laughs> Sorry about that. And so what do we know? Well, we know that it went up 3 and to the right So there's example four. Now we had left off looking at um, moving things up, down, left, and right. And in this um, section, in this part of this section, we're going to talk about vertically sh shrinking or stretching and horizontally shrinking and stretching. Some books refer to this as a compression and a stretch. Um, you know, for this, to me, um, the discovery of what happens, it might be a good idea to just plug in points and see what happens, okay? So, um, but let's discuss it. If I want to vertically stretch something, so stretch it up and down, if I multiply, now remember, anything that is going to change something vertically, you need to be on the outside of the function. If I multiply on the outside of the function by a, and it's bigger than 1, it's going to stretch it. If it is a number between 0 and 1, and it's really its absolute value, we'll discuss that a little bit more. So if it's a proper fraction, then it is going to shrink it vertically. So um, you can think of it as compressing it downward, okay? Compressing it sometimes toward the x-axis. Now, if we want to um, compress something in from left to right or stretch it from left to right, that's anytime we change something horizontally, that is where it gets a little strange to wrap your head around. This time, if we multiply our x by something bigger than 1, so it would be inside the function, then it is going to shrink it horizontally. So it is going to compress it toward the y-axis. If you multiply by a proper fraction inside the function by the x, it's going to stretch it outward, stretch it away from the y-axis. Now, in this first example, um, the x's that they choose are n not my x's. So again, sorry, I wish I would have seen that earlier. Let's cover that up. You will notice, hopefully, 
Both of these are squares, so our parent function is our good old uh, quadratic. Except this time, um, we are doing something to the outside. So we are going to be talking about a vertical stretch or compression. Okay? So which is which? Well, when it's on the outside, it's really nice. We still just plug in our good old negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So let's plug in, well, let's write down the original. So the original would be 1, 0, 1. Okay. So let's do our f of x function. I'll do it in blue. Um, so for that one, did they give me two graphs? Nah, so that's okay. That's okay. So for that one, they are multiplying by a fraction on the outside. So you just take Plug in negative 1, get 1 times a fourth. 0 times a fourth. 1 times a fourth. Okay? What happens, I'm going to put the original in purple. Um, and let's draw the f of x function in blue. So at negative 1, I am only at a fourth. At zero, I'm still at zero, and at positive one, I'm at a fourth. See how it compressed it closer to the x-axis. So this is a vertical compression, or shrinkage, whatever. I like compression is actually the more mathematical description, okay? Now I'm gonna do the g of x in um, red. So, because it's on the outside, we can plug in the normal three x values. Negative one squared, so that would be one times four is four. Zero squared is zero, times four is zero. And then one squared times is one, times four is four. Let's plug in that one. So at negative one, I'm at four. At positive one, I'm at four. At zero, I'm at zero. So that one is a vertical stretch. Okay? So that is just an example of if I multiply on the outside by a proper fraction, I am going to compress it downward closer to the x-axis. If I multiply on the outside by a number bigger than one, I'm going to stretch it above higher uh, than above the x-axis, stretch it upward. Here is an example of compressing it left to right. Okay. Now it's something on the inside. Since it's on the inside, I'm going to need to make a new xy chart for both of these. And uh, let me show you my original x's. Let me cover these up. Well, you know my original x's for the square root. We talked about it earlier. R0, <laughs> not that. R0, 1, and 4. And those values would be 0, 1, and 2. Okay. So, because there's been a change on the inside, we need to change our x's. I'm going to do my first one here in red. So, I need the inside to equal the x's we see here. So, 0, 1, and 4. So what's going to happen each time? Well, each time to solve, you got to divide by 5. So this is going to be 0, 1 fifth, and uh, 4 fifths. So those are the nice x's to plug in for this one. 
So if I plug in zero, I get zero. If I plug in one fifth, I get the square root of one, which is one. If I plug in four fifths, I get the square root of four, which is two. Okay. Do you see how by plugging in the x's I want, I am going to get um, the y's that work out nice. Okay. Now I'm going to over here. I am going to graph the original parent function. Now our parent is y equals square root of x. Okay, now in red, I'm going to do our r of x function. So what the heck is that? Okay, so at zero, I'm at zero. At one-fifth, I'm at one. At four-fifths, I'm at two. Now it's a little hard to see but what it has done is it's taken the blue graph and it's lifted it so it's closer to the y-axis. So we call that a horizontal compression. Sometimes a horizontal compression and a vertical stretch look the same. So if you would have said that, hey, that's stretching it upward, go for it, okay? <laughs> it's kind of interesting how they kind of go hand in hand. Now let's do our s of x function. So we're going to set the inside equal to the original three, zero, one, and four. To solve each one of those for x, we have to multiply by five. So we're going to get zero, five, and 20. So let's plug those in. The square root of zero, or first let's do zero divided by five is zero. The square root of that is zero. Five divided by five is one. The square root of that is one. 20 divided by five is four. The square root of that is two. Okay. Uh, let's graph it. So at zero, we're at zero. At five, we're at one. At 20, way out here, uh, assume it's, it's off the chart, but way out here, we're up at 2. Now, what did that do? Well, technically, it stretched it further away than it used to be from the y-axis. That technically is a horizontal stretch. Now, some functions are easier to see these stretches and compressions. And even if you just describe to me in very general terms, hey, it looks taller, hey, it looks skinnier, hey, you know, that's fine by me, as long as you have an accurate graph. Let's look at this. Now, sometimes they don't really give us an equation for the graph. They give us some funky graph that you see here in blue and red. So, what does this mean? Well, it should compress it from left to right by a factor of four. So what do we do? Let's take the points in red. Wherever they are at now, whatever their distance is from the y-axis, we're going to divide that distance by four. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, this point is a distance of one away from the y-axis. It now needs to go a distance of two one-fourth. This point is a distance of one, two, three from the y-axis. Three divided by four is one fourth. Three, three divided by four is three fourths. Oh my gosh. So it is gonna be still down at negative one, but it's gonna be right here. Okay, let's look at this one. It is one, two, three, four units away three down, but four units away. Now it's going to be one unit away. And then let's go to this one. It's one, two, three, four, five, six units away. Six divided by four is uh, three halves or 1.5. So at 1.5, we're going to be here. 
and then let's connect them with the blue lines. So that was that bam, bam, bam. I wish I could do that a little better. Let me try it one more time. Okay. So it what it's done is it has not changed the heights. You'll see I'm still at a height of negative one, then positive one, then negative three, then positive three. But what it did change is how close I was to the y-axis, okay? So if you're inside the function, you're always gonna change how it moves or its structure in and out, left and right. But if it's on the outside of the function, it's gonna make it go up or down, okay? That's a weird one. Let's take a look at this. So, so far we've added, subtracted on the inside, added, subtracted on the outside, multiplied by some kind of uh, whole number or fractional number uh, on the inside and outside. Now let's talk about reflections. If you want to reflect or flip something across the x-axis, just multiply on the outside of the function by negative one. Why is that? Well, because it takes the positive y values or function values and makes them negative or vice versa. If we want to reflect something across the y-axis, you have to multiply on the inside of the function by negative one. Okay, that being said, we've got a function given same red dots in blue that we saw from before, a little bit different, but they want us to flip it. So if we put a negative on the outside of the function, first let me put the red dots, all it is gonna do is going to flip it down. Anything above the x-axis is gonna go down, same distance. Sorry, I'm trying to count. <laughs> and, but, new height, okay? So all I did was connect, same thing, but it's gonna go under the x-axis because all those positives are gonna become negative, okay? Now let's look what this does. This is gonna flip it perfectly across the y-axis. So this is a flip over x-axis. This is gonna flip over the y-axis. Okay, so let's do that one. So that's gonna, sorry, that's still gonna be there. And that's gonna be there. That's gonna be there. It's gonna be there. Let's connect it with a blue line here. Okay, so do you see how it's the same exact shape but now across the y-axis? So that's how you would flip a function. You'll notice it did not change the size, it only changed kind of its direction. So here's the transformations in a nutshell. So let me remind you what they were. If you wanted to move, so we're first starting with this one. If you wanna move the function up, add something on the outside. Down, subtract something on the outside. If you wanna move something to the right, subtract on the inside. If you want to move something to the left, add on the inside. If you want to shrink or stretch it vertically, up and down, you have to multiply by something on the outside. If it's a fraction, it's going to shrink it. If it's something bigger than one, it's going to stretch it. If you multiply on the inside, it's kind of the opposite that happens. This time we are going to stretch it or shrink it in relationship to the y-axis, left and right. And so if we multiply by a number bigger than one, it is going to shrink it closer to the y-axis. If we multiply it by a fraction, a proper fraction, it is gonna stretch it away from the y-axis. It's gonna stretch it outward. If we wanna multiply 
by a negative on the outside, it's going to flip it over the x-axis. A negative on the inside is going to flip it over the y-axis. So it says, to graph a function requiring multiple transformations, use the following order. First, make any horizontal translation. So horizontal translation, that's left and right. And then remember, this is going to change your x's. Okay. Second, then we want to change any stretch horizontally and vertically. Then we want to do any reflections. And then finally, you're going to move it up or down. Okay. Basically, what does that do? Don't worry about any of it. Follow order of operations. What I like to think about is change what's on the inside for your X's, plug it in, you'll get the Y's that match, it will naturally change for you. Here they've done one for you, okay? But I'm gonna kinda go through the process, how it changes, okay? So look, the first thing I'm gonna do is discover where my middle changes. Well, x plus 1 equals 0 at negative 1. So that's my new middle at negative 1. So that tells me it's going to go left 1. So my v, which is right here, we know shifts to the left 1. And then you can just plug in negative 2, negative 1, and 0. And then you've got what you need. Okay. And um, so they say if you were to just try to graph it without plugging in any points, you would shift it to the left one, move all the values up 2 by multiplying the y values by 2, then subtract 3 from all those. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I would do for this problem. Okay. Let me go through the steps with you. So the first thing I would do is set x plus 1 equal to 0, which is negative 1. So that's our center. So I know I need to plug in negative 1, negative 2, and 0. Okay, so this is my v, my point. Okay, now let's plug those in. If I plug in negative 2, I get negative 1. The absolute value of that is 1. Then what are you going to do next? Multiply by 2. That's the vertical stretch. So... Um, negative 1 times 2, or <laughs> negative 2's absolute value when plugged in will give me the absolute value of negative 1 plus 2. No. <sighs> I'm sorry. Let's do it. Oh, let's plug it right here. We get the absolute value of negative 1 is 1 times 2 is 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Sorry about that. Now let's do negative 1. We get 0 times 2 is 0. Minus 3 is negative 3. And then finally, 0 plus 1 is 1. The absolute value of that is 1. Times 2 is 2. Minus 3 is negative 1. You should get this matching. That's going to occur for quadratics. If you pick the right center, it's going to happen for your um, absolute value function. Okay. And you'll notice that you get all the points that you see here in blue. Negative 2 is down here at negative 1. Negative 1 is down here at negative 3. 0 is at negative 1. I mean, so it works, okay? Now, let's do number 10. So, what do we think is going to happen? Well, it should probably flip over the x. It should probably flip over the y. There probably should be a right movement, and then it should be compressed. Do you need to know all that right off the bat? No. Let's take it step by step. Okay, so take the inside for a square root. Remember, know your square root parent function. It's written right here in red. So let me make mine red here. So our parent function we know is 0, 1, and 4 are the good x's, and I get 0, 1, and 2. That's what we see right here. Okay, let's use that to our advantage. That's why I have you memorize those. So take the inside, set it equal to 0, set it equal to 1, set it equal to 4. Let's solve each one. 
I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, divide by negative 1. So my first value I would plug in <laughs> is going to be 3. Now let's do this one. We get negative x equals negative 2, so x equals 2. And then I'm going to plug negative x equals 1, so x equals negative 1. Okay. And then let's plug them into the function. So they're just going to go right here for my x's. So 3 minus 3 is 0. The square root of that is 0. Times negative 1 half is still 0. Let's plug in 2. Uh, let's see. 3 minus 2 is 1. The square root of that is 1. Times negative 1 half is negative 1 half. 3 minus a negative 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. Let's graph it. Now it says to, um, or I want you to get in the habit of describing the transformation, but let's graph it. So 1, 2, 3, we're at 0. 1, 2, negative 1 half. Negative 1, negative 1. Okay. Now compare it to the one in red. I know it's smaller, so don't let that fool you, okay? But what happened? What's well, gone to the right, 3. It's flipped over the y-axis. It's flipped over the x-axis. And it isn't quite as high as the other one. So there is a vertical compression, okay? So that, I would always graph it, then describe it all. But you want to get in the habit of describing what happened, okay? So that is lesson, um, what was it, 2.6. Very, very important that you know these parent functions by heart. Know the points that graph it nicely so that you can graph all the other ones. You'll notice each time I kept going back to those points that are graphed nicely. Please make sure you know these by heart, okay? Um, thanks so much for watching, and you have a good day.